a gift for me. How kind. Wow. A new SSD and a note. It's from Crispy. I love hearing from Simon Crisp. Always a pleasure. To Leo Waldock, the studio, somewhere in the glorious English countryside. Hello, mate. He's a treasure, that Simon. I enclose the new WD Black SN850 SSD with PCI Express Gen 4 interface. Yes, you do. How's about you take a look at my review and see what you think? Okie dokie. The new Black is a superb drive and deserves a video, but as you know, I cannot do videos myself because of that thing we do not discuss. Ah, uh, true. Bad times. When you have finished with the SSD, please feel free to return it to me. Happy Christmas, Cy. Never liked that guy, now I know why. Before we get into Simon's review of the SN850, it's worth having a little bit of a history lesson so we can remind ourselves how we got to this position. This Sabrent rocket drive was one of the first, if not the first, to have Gen 4 as the interface based on the Fizon E12. The controller is essentially an update of a Gen 3 controller. The drive is fairly blooming fast. When we saw Gen 4 SSDs and the likes of Corsair and Gigabyte, they used the same Fizon controller as this Sabrent rocket. At that time, the likes of WD were using their own controller in their blue drive and an early black. This is an SN700. Subsequently, there was an SN750. For some reason, WD didn't feel happy having firmware updates to make the 700 into the 750, so they forked the product, so to speak. The 750 is a perfectly decent drive. Simon reviewed both the Bear 750 and also the 750 with the EK heatsink. Somewhat confusingly, Western Digital is sticking to its uh, approach of having the black as the fastest drive. So we've had a number of Gen 3 blacks and now we have the SN850 Gen 4 black. Western Digital designs and manufactures their own controllers. So first we had the WD Black G1 and now we have the WD Black G2. Western Digital has control of NAND production and firmware and the controller. So they produce a drive and they go, there you are. In exactly the same way that Samsung did with their 980 Pro. If you remember, Samsung doesn't even tell us how many layers are in the NAND. It's 1XX, as in 100 and something. 101, 199, we don't know. We know that the new Western Digital Drive has 96 layers of BIX4 NAND. Uh, we wonder when they're going to start using BIX5, which is uh, already announced and I believe in production. And 96 is significantly more than the 64 used in the blue. This is the bare drive, as you can see. Uh, which is significant because the Gen 4 controller appears to be rather more toasty than the Gen 3. And then in January, we expect to see the SN850 with a heatsink. Tragically, at quite a premium. It looks like they're charging up to £50 for the heatsink, which doesn't sound right. Albeit, it's a heatsink with RGB. You can see what I think about that. But let's put that to one side. For the time being, we're talking about the SN850 without heatsink and it's got a Gen 4 interface. AMD has been supporting PCI Express Gen 4 for some while now. Intel is just catching up. 11th Gen Tiger Lake in laptops is Gen 4. The significant thing is gonna be when Rocket Lake comes onto the desktop uh, sometime next year, hopefully sooner rather than later, that will also have PCI Express Gen 4. And that, of course, is the reason why NVIDIA's RTX 3000 has a Gen 4 interface, Samsung has the 980 Pro, and Western Digital's new black SSD is also Gen 4. It also means if you want to benchmark Gen 4 products, you need an AMD platform because Intel currently does not do the job. In their reviewer's guide, Western Digital makes some bold claims for the new SN850 drive compared to the original SN750-700. Basically, double the performance, which is wow. I think the simple thing is for me to run some quick runs of Crystal Disk Mark and then you can see for yourself what you think about WD's claims and then we will finally 
get into Simon's review. My test setup consists of an ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard, a Sapphire RX 6800 XT graphics card, processor is an AMD Ryzen 5 3600, and we have some G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600 megahertz, that's a 32 gig dual channel kit, and a Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watt power supply. The PC is running on this Toshiba RC100 SSD. I'm going to start with the WD Blue SN550. And as you can see, performance is okay. Temperatures are actually pretty blooming good. Next, we have the WD Black SN700. Performance takes a significant step forward compared to the blue. Temperatures slightly warmer. Now we move on to the Sabrent Rocket. This is a PCI Express Gen 4 drive with a Fizen controller. Performance, oh yes, this is a different league. Temperatures also getting slightly warmer. And we finish up with the WD Black SN850. This is also of course Gen 4. And performance is wow. This is clearly a different take on Gen 4, and it's paid off big time. Temperatures, however, are certainly looking uncomfortable. You can see why WD is bringing out a version with a heatsink. That's quite enough of my chit chat. It's time to turn the show over to Simon's review, which, after all, is why you're here in the first place. Head over to kickguru.net to read Simon's review, where you will see endless graphs. He benchmarked the bejesus out of the SN850 and the short takeaway is it matches WD's claimed performance figures. In the main the SN850 is running in the top three in our charts very often at the top. It very much seems to be the equal of Samsung's 980 Pro drive. Some of the tests have results that are slightly anomalous this may be down to Simon using a Ryzen 5 processor rather than the Ryzen 9. We'll reach out to WD for confirmation of this point or a denial because if you're required to use a 12 or 16 core processor to get the full benefits of your new SSD, that is something we want to know about. In real world file transfer tests, you're looking at an average of half a gigabyte per second. If you're transferring files in a pure NVMe environment rather than between SATA and NVMe, you will see the transfer speed shoot up over a gigabyte per second, perhaps as high as two gigabytes per second. Simon's takeaway is that the new black SN850 is a stellar drive. Pretty much his only point of concern is that the controller gets rather hot under load. Balanced against that, you've got a five year warranty. It might make sense to wait until the heatsink model comes along because based on previous testing done by Kit Guru, that heatsink is going to have a healthy benefit. As things stand, this SSD is a winner.